Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of choosing to be grateful along your path to success. When we are constantly striving for something in life, whether it be more money, the ideal partner, or to move up in your job, we often tell ourselves, I'll be happy when this happens or when I get what I want. The problem is constantly striving can wear our minds and bodies out because we put so much stress and emphasis on procrastinating our happiness to only when we achieve our goals. Choosing to be grateful along the way of every milestone is the key to true and fulfilling happiness. It allows us to relish in every success we have, whether big or small, bringing on an overwhelming sense of gratitude and happiness. Procrastinating our happiness to only when a goal is fulfilled is counterproductive because there will always be another goal and another milestone to conquer. Gratitude on seeing how far you've come and for each milestone brings more good things to you because you understand the obstacles you've had to overcome to evolve into the person you are today. Goals are a tool to concentrate our focus and move us in a direction. The true reason we pursue any goal is to cause ourselves to expand and grow. Remember, achieving a goal by itself will never make you happy in the long term. It's who you become and the progress and small victories you celebrate along the way that will give you deep and long lasting fulfillment. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. So I want to ask you, what are three things that you think have separated you from other people and made you successful? Three traits. I'm truly passionate about what I do. Mm. So, you know, a lot of people get into fitness part time, make a little extra money, don't know what to do, but like to work out, but they don't really love the science of it helping people with it. If you're not passionate about something, I really don't believe that the universe, God, and serendipity, fate, insert whatever you know noun you want there, will conspire on your behalf. Next up on the show, we have one of the world's leading health and wellness experts, Jillian Michaels. She is also the creator of the Jillian Michaels Fitness app. Jillian, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's great seeing you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. It's um, We have pretty nice weather here in Toronto, so I'm happy. Usually it's very cold at this time, but the weather's been really nice, so no complaints. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I've been hearing that a lot. I have friends in like Chicago and New York who are saying it's in the 70s. Meanwhile, it's been like 50 in LA. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are lucky though. You guys have nice weather all year round, so it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm very grateful for that. So it's such an honor for you to be on the show. Let's let's dive into your background. So when did you realize health and wellness was something that you wanted to pursue as a career? Gosh, um, how can I make that a shorter <laughs> answer? Let's see I, I fell into it as a kid in my late teens, like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I was training for my black belt at the time. Um, and people saw me in the gym working out and they thought I was a trainer. So they approached me about training them. And I was like, I wonder how much money I could make doing this. Cause I think yeah. I was making like five bucks an hour delivering pizza. Oh. At the time. <laughs> wow. God's honest truth. God's honest truth. <laughs> and, uh, so my mom, thank God had the foresight to get me my first little certification. So I started doing it when I was like 17, 18, loved it. Uh, and then by the age of 24, I thought maybe, you know, maybe I should get a real job. Like, you know, surely I can't do this the rest of my life. Got a real job, never made less money, never been more miserable. Got out of that job by 27, fell back into training because I had to pay bills. Got a call one day from a client who was in tears because she felt her hip bone for the first time in eight years. Wow. And at that moment, I was like, all right. I love this. I've always loved it. I'm good at it. It brings a lot of meaning in my life. And that's when I committed to doing it as a career and it became a process as a businesswoman to try to figure out how to make good money at it so it wasn't constantly hand to mouth. But that really was the actual defining moment it was when I was 27 and you know got that call and I thought all right, I got to, you know, this is what I love. Now I got to make a career out of it. Yeah. And have you been surprised by all of your success because it's been incredible? 
I think that I am the classic example of luck, right? Which is preparation meeting opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I believe everybody gets an opportunity and then it's your job to be prepared. Yeah. So um, I'm very good at preparing myself for opportunities. Uh, so I would honestly tell you, no, I'm not surprised because I think I have done the work um, to deliver on whatever promise I make professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, it's kind of a formula, right? Like you love what you do, you do the work, um, you bring these actions, very specific actions to very passionate intentions. And then I think it's a matter of attrition, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. about being the last one standing. It's that patience, passion, perseverance. And when you do those three things, I do believe anything's possible for anyone. Mm -hmm. And I have done those three things. And so, you know, here we are today. Yeah, that's that's very true. Being prepared, of course, and also, as you said, you know, the determination to succeed, because if you want to succeed in everything or anything, you have to be very determined. So I love that. Let's talk about, you know, I love your sense of discipline. You have like that no BS approach to discipline. So how did you develop that? Was that something you always had or was there a time in your life that you lacked that discipline? Um, there absolutely was. <laughs> I, I was, it's not a secret that I was an overweight kid. Um, mm -hmm. I had a father who's overweight and it was very much a part of the family dynamic. Mm -hmm. So I have a strong understanding uh, of how deep people's issues surrounding food, utilizing food as a defense mechanism, a coping mechanism, feeding deeper psychological hungers was all a thing for me, all a mm -hmm. thing within my family. And my mom got me into martial arts when I was about 12. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began to very gradually over time with the help of an entire martial arts studio and a karate teacher develop discipline. And it really is about success begetting success, right? I, I believed in my teacher. I believed in the people at this karate studio and they believed in me. So it was almost like a bridge, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, you believe in me and I believe in you. Indirectly, you do actually believe in you and you mm -hmm. know, put your faith in me right now. And so it was, it developed over many years, a tremendous amount of time, but I, I have to credit martial arts for giving me that, that discipline in these areas. Mm -hmm. And of course, discipline, success, it's all in the mind. It's, the, it's a mindset. So how do you coach your clients to have that level of discipline because as you know you have to be disciplined to achieve anything great right it's it's a process <laughs> really you know I, I literally wrote an entire book about it i like i don't give this to in a nutshell you know the the first part is empowering them so one of the things that i used to do on biggest loser i would say there were three benchmarks i needed to hit or needed these individuals to hit before they went home Mm -hmm. The first one was they had to take responsibility because if we can't yeah. take responsibility for where we are, no matter how unfair life has been, no matter, you know, because there are times in our lives where we are victims, period, end mm -hmm. of story, there are. But then we grow up, right? And we perpetuate these patterns. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually called a repetition compulsion because we think we can master it, right? We're going to do the same thing over and over, whether it's a dysfunctional relationship or whatever it might be because we're trying to get a different outcome. Mm -hmm. And we think if we get a different outcome, we won't have to grieve whatever happened in the past. So anyway, it begets this negative uh, self-talk, destructive patterns and behaviors. So the first thing is helping someone realize as hard as it might be that they are currently responsible for where they are now. And if mm -hmm. they cannot accept that, they're fundamentally disempowered to change because you're mm -hmm. a victim, so you have no power or control. Mm -hmm. That's one. Number two, they kind of need a rock bottom moment. Yeah. No matter what, what it is, it could be health, it could be business, it could be relationships, where they feel the pain and the hardship of engaging in whatever behaviors or habits are holding them back, so much so that it hurts more to continue doing the things they're doing that are, that are sabotaging them than their fear and the work associated with change. And then the third thing is they need a success. Mm 
So you look at an individual, right? And, and you go, all right, I need to give you a success within your learning zone. So for example, if you're crawling, right? I want to get you to stand. If you're mm -hmm. standing, I want to get you to take a few steps. Mm -hmm. If you're walking, I want to get you to jog and so on. Mm -hmm. So you get the person who's crawling and get them to sprint. You, you look at that learning zone and you go, all right, this is where I need to get them. This is within their reach with the right coaching and the right information. Mm -hmm. I can get them there. You give somebody that first success. And then of course it's exponential. It begets success because it starts to gradually redefine the way they see themselves, what they believe they're capable of. And you know, you can take somebody, that's why fitness is such a great tool because they'll tell you, oh, I'm weak, I'm lazy, I was the whatever, you know, insert negative sort of self-talk, negative identity, whatever it might be here. And then you get that like weak, lazy, whatever they think they are, that individual to do that push up, they never that possible or to run their first mile or whatever it might be to do that yoga pose. And they go, oh my God, I actually can do all this stuff. And if I can do this, what else is possible? So it begins mm -hmm. to open up this infinity of possibilities. So apologies for a very long answer, but- No, that's um, great. <laughs> not, not as concise as I can make it, because it, <laughs> literally it's it's an entire book, but there's, there's a few quick pointers for you. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that you said, you know, you get them to take responsibility because most people are always playing the blame game. They say, I can't do this, and they give excuses, and they never really take responsibility. And once you do that, you're able to change the outcome. And I also like the fact that you said about hitting rock bottom, because you know even Tony Robbins says, in life you need inspiration or desperation. So I love that. I think those are really great points. You know, right now with COVID and quarantine, uh, people are lazy. <laughs> they don't want to go to the gym. Gyms are closed. They're at home. So what advice do you have for people that want to stay healthy, want to stay in shape, um, and maybe are just not feeling that motivation. Okay, I wouldn't say lazy, and, and I only bring this up because I don't really believe in it. Oh, um, yeah. And this actually comes from my mother, who's a psychoanalyst. People, they're not lazy. There's something else getting in the way, but it isn't because they're lazy. Uh, and I, I don't want people to use that word to identify themselves because once again, right? It's like if you think you're lazy, then you're gonna behave a certain way and it's gonna dictate and determine your reality. You might be depressed, yes. You might be overwhelmed, mm -hmm. yes. You know, you might be feeling all of these things and it's hard to get going, but you're not lazy. So having empathy for yourself is a big piece of it. Now with that said, by coming from this place of being empathetic, I would say, Here's a very good rule of thumb. Treat yourself the way you would treat your kids, right? Would you sit there and be like, you're so lazy? Probably not, unless you're like a super crappy parent. <laughs> Probably wouldn't. You'd be like, sweet, what's going on? You know, I see that you're down. I see that you're upset. And it's like, how can I help you? Do you need a play date? Do we need to, you know, what do we need to do, right? Do the same thing with yourself. What do you need to do? What, what activities do you love? Mm -hmm. If it's like, I miss that dance class. Like, all right, download some dance workouts from trainers you love. I miss community. Get in a Facebook group. Get in an online community where you can, you know, recreate that. Is it, I, I just need accountability. Okay, get a trainer who will do some Facebook sh sessions with you very cheaply because they, they don't have to go anywhere. You know, I know a lot of trainers who are doing this right now. Whatever you need to do to sort of nurture yourself into it because if you're stuck, there's something else going on and you're not lazy. So it's it's going to require some empathy, nurturing, and making sure that it doesn't feel more punishing. Because mm -hmm. when the day feels punishing, you know, anything else that feels punishing, we're like, I can't, I can't take one more thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to make it as fun as you can, as, as steeped in self-love as you can make it and give yourself anything and everything that you miss or enjoy about fitness, or community and incorporate that to the best of your abilities to help motivate you to take that first step. And then of course, once you get started, it's physics. It's like a body in motion tends to stay in motion literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. I won't use the word lazy. I'm going to say unmotivated. <laughs> I think that's that's more <laughs> a better word. Um, obviously, you're in incredible shape. I always see your YouTube videos, at, sorry, your Instagram and social media, and you're always working out and doing these powerful workouts. How have you stayed motivated during quarantine? Has it been difficult at all, or is it just something that, you know? 
You know, for me, it's not difficult. This is what I do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, it, you know, it, it, it it's inherent for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that's yeah. This is the one thing I do, and I do well. So no. Um, but I'm lucky because I have a ton of motivation surrounding me. So it's very easy for me to find that why, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to do the work? And that why brings the purpose. So when you have purpose with work, it's passion. True. For True. me, it's my kids, right? I want to be the mom that my kids are like, my mom was such a badass. You know, she was on the slopes with me. She, who knows, you know, whatever crazy she, she she taught me karate. She even though my kids have a great karate teacher, but like I'll come home and spar with them. Like I want to be that mom that they look back and they're like, my mom was just an absolute badass. I want to be that mom. Mm -hmm. I want to meet kids' kids. I want to meet their kids. Mm -hmm. I want to look and feel good in my own skin because it matters to me. I I feel more confident when I'm strong and I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, it empowers me, and then it's my job. Right, so it's literally my <laughs> livelihood. I need the ability to go, yeah, I know what I am talking about. Mm -hmm. Here you go. I mean, because I can put out before and afters, but at the end of the day, if I if I don't take care of my own health, how am I ever going to help anybody else do that? Mm -hmm. So I'm motivated to cross the board to stay healthy, and I have the tools to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I know how to do it. I know how to do an at-home workout. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. It's what I'm known or is at home workouts, right? So for me, it's a little bit easier. You know, you ask me to, you ask me how I'm handling all the tech at home, badly. <laughs> <laughs> Very badly. I like, you know, that's an adapt, that's an, uh, I'm having to adapt and adjust to that for sure. Yeah, I love that, that you walk your walk, you know, you're motivated and you stick to it. Let's talk about your app. I know you launched your new app. Let's talk about it. Oh, well, um, we're actually, it's been around for a little while, but we're in the process of expanding it. Okay. So um, what it is, is it's a personal training and nutrition app. So now we're adding mindfulness meditations, we're adding audio workouts, we're adding new trainers in the new year. And the whole idea is you go to the app, you download it, and you're asked a series of questions like, what is it that you wanna do? What's your current fitness level? What is your fitness goal? What types of workouts do you like? You know, do you want HIIT workouts, yoga workouts, prenatal workouts, kickboxing workouts, weight training workouts, workouts with no equipment? The sky's really the limit. Mm -hmm. And then your workout is created around you. So there's all of my DVDs in there as well, in case you wanted those. You can stream them to your television, your tablet, your phone, but you can also get a custom workout, as I just mentioned or an audio workout to go run outside. So whether it's at home, even at the gym, which, you know, is not a thing at the moment, but we have, <laughs> we have gym workouts as well. Um, outdoors, whatever it might be, the idea is how can we take the science of fitness and nutrition and wrap it around the individual so it's easier. And it's the same for food. So we have our team of registered dietitians who've created thousands of recipes. So you can literally say, I want the vegan meal plan. I don't like keto, but I did have um, Dr. Josh Axe actually wrote a 30 day keto reboot. Cause again, this is very much like a religion. I respect everyone's religion. I just try to apply the science that I know works for everybody so that people get what they need to stay motivated and get the results thereafter. So no matter what the meal plan, no matter what the workout, we can give it to you in a way that helps keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. I like that you touch base on nutrition because that's very important. And you know, people are home right now and a lot of people are binge eating because they're working from home and spending more time than usual at home. So what advice do you have for someone that you know, wants to stay healthy, but it's finding it hard, especially staying at home and snacking all the time? <laughs> I know. Um, well, okay. There's, there's two components. There's the actual science because I'm a firm believer that if I give somebody the information, at least they know it and the choices they do make will yield powerful results because a lot of times I see people going, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm eating healthy. And I was like, all right, what does that mean? And they'll tell you, Oh, avocado and this and that. And it's like, that's great. But you just ate 3000 calories today. So, uh... 
here's the bottom line. If you don't overeat, right, you can't gain weight. So essentially think of it like a checkbook. Okay. You burn so many calories in a day. So that would be like money you have coming in. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we eat so many calories in a day, which would be money you're spending. You need to balance that checkbook. So if you're burning 2000 calories in a day, you don't want to eat over 2000 calories in a day and you won't gain weight. Even if the food is crap, which I do not want you to do, but the reality is there have been study after study after study after study. It's the law of thermodynamics. It's an energy equation. It's calories in calories out. Now, when it comes to your health, common sense, it really is common sense. It's don't eat fake food. Don't eat fake fat, fake sugar, fake sweeteners, foods covered in pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, meat. That's got a ton of hormones. It's like, go as clean and healthy as you can make your food as whole and natural as possible. So mm. whole grains, right? Mm. Not the processed white flour, the refined white sugar, eat the apple, not apple juice. Mm. That is going to help you with weight and health overall period. Mm. Those two rules are critical. They apply. The rest of it is up to you, but you shouldn't be cutting carbs. You don't need to, you know what I mean? This is not necessary, totally unnecessary. And in most cases, not even healthy. So, there's that. Now, if you find that you're going to the fridge because you're anxious, or you're going to the fridge because you're stressed, or you're having all these cravings, or you're emotionally eating, then you got to employ a different tactic, right? So then you sort of get into behavioral control mechanisms, like don't buy the junk food so it's not there to tempt you. Surround mm -hmm. yourself and your environment with all the different imagery of your goals or things that inspire you play music you love that's upbeat that makes you want to work out engage in habits and behaviors that are totally counterintuitive to binging hmm. but there's a, a lot of different strategies but you know distract yourself with a hobby or a habit that makes you feel nurtured and comforted it, it could be a hobby you like to engage in it could be getting a manicure pedicure it could be giving yourself a facial there's many different tactics hmm. pick Pick a few that I mentioned, but most importantly, you can't eat what isn't there. So if there's a trigger food that you're binging on, don't buy it. Don't buy mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I, I think that's great advice. It's very practical and it makes sense. Just don't buy it so you're not tempted. <laughs> oh, don't do it if you can avoid doing it. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, you know, last but not least, our show is all about inspiring people. Um, so I want to ask you, what are three things that you think have separated you from other people and made you successful? Three traits. Okay. Um, I'm truly passionate about what I do. Mm. So, you know, a lot of people get into fitness part time, make a little extra money don't know what to do, but like to work out, but they don't really love the science of it, uh, helping people with it. If you're not passionate about something, I really don't believe that the universe, God and serendipity, fate, insert whatever, you know, noun you want there will conspire on your behalf mm -hmm. to sell it something. I do believe you, you've got to authentically love it in order to do all of the harder stuff that goes along with being successful. So then the second thing is I'm really well educated and I being in my position, you know, a lot of people want to sort of put bullet holes in your, in your principles, your theories or your, whatever it might be. So I have the tremendous luxury of accessing some of the best registered dietitians, some of the best biochemists, some of the best mm -hmm. endocrinologists, like, I can ask an anthropologist about paleo and get an actual answer. Like, is this real? Was this really a thing? What was the actual paleo diet? And then I'll be able to give that information to other people. Like, mm -hmm. that's not true. That is true. This is what's proven scientifically. So the reason that's so important is because when someone goes, all right, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to, I'm going to try Jillian Michaels. I'm going to see if she's full of it or not. Like mm -hmm. what's the height? but then they get results. Mm -hmm. Then they're like, all right, I may not like her, or maybe you do, who knows, but you did this work out of mine, or you read this book of mine and try, you know, cut the calories and lost the weight or whatever it might be that you wanted to do. You now have credibility. Cause it's like, whether they like you or not, 
if you deliver on that promise and you can back up everything you say, it, it does give you, you, you have passion, but you also have authenticity. Mm -hmm. And when you can deliver results, you've got brand longevity. And I think the third thing is, I just don't take anything personally. You know, if you, if you are going to pursue a career and you eventually develop a, a modicum of success, people are gonna, you know, they're gonna go after you. They're not gonna like you. They're gonna, who knows, could be a million reasons. If that affects you, it's gonna be a real problem because if it, it compromises who you actually are or what your message would be because you want people to like you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example that's not a popular one. You know, you will never catch me saying that it's healthy to be morbidly obese. It's, it's just not true. Mm -hmm. So while I can make a heck of a lot more people like me mm -hmm. by telling, telling you that, right? It's not true. And deep down, they know it's, it's bullshit. I don't know yeah. if I can say yeah. <laughs> no, it's not true. So whether they hate you for saying it, I think that, you know, there's deep down, there's a level of like, all right, well, at least she's brave enough to say it. At least she's she's telling me the truth and I can at least trust that even if I hate her. Mm -hmm. Those things I think have made me stand out because I've watched so many fitness experts and I get the, you know, the messages behind the scenes. It's like, oh, you know, you know, you know, I'm so glad you said it. I'm like, say it, you can say it too. You're mm -hmm. a doctor. Mm -hmm. You can say, you know, I was the first one to come out against keto. It was ridiculous. Then a mm -hmm. year later, all of a sudden it was listed by doctors as the most unhealthy diet in America. And it's mm -hmm. like, where have you guys been? Yeah. Where have you been? But they're like afraid to say something. So I think that authenticity, that passion, and that integrity are critical. Mm -hmm. Well, we can definitely feel your passion. And I love that you're really authentic. You say what's on your mind and people feel it and love that about you. So thank you so much, Jillian, for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. And congratulations on all your success. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. And um, I hope we get to do this again sometime yes, soon. Yes, anytime, anytime. <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.